Welcome to Alkira Design Zone. Julian here to take you through resource sharing today on the Alkira Network Cloud. Now this video builds on some concepts we introduced in our segmentation and network services insertion video. But what I want to do is I just want to start with you off with a recap of how segmentation works. So with Alkira Network Segmentation, what we can do is we can divide our network into isolated segments or routing domains where each one of those segments enables ubiquitous communication within the segment, if permitted by network policy but explicitly restricts any communication between segments. Now, this is great for isolating my network for security or other business purposes, but there are some use cases where I want to enable restricted communication between these segments. And that's where resource sharing comes into play. So in this example, I've got a corporate segment, a PCI segment, and a partner segment. Let's say for my first use case, in my corporate segment, I'm hosting all my infrastructure services, DNS directory, and so on. Now, I don't want to replicate those services into every other segment. So instead, what I can do is use resource sharing to allow other segments to access those services, but just those services specifically. So let's say in this case, I want my PCI segment to be able to call out into my corporate segment to access those DNS and directory services and so forth without having to recreate those services in the PCI segment, while at the same time, explicitly denying any other communication. Another use case could be, let's say in my PCI segment, I have a service that collects cardholder data and I've got an external business partner on my partner segment that does cardholder data verification for me. Now, for this example, let's say that these services require bi-directional communication. So this is another place I can apply resource sharing to allow that bi-directional communication. But in this case, I also want to insert a next-gen firewall from the Alkira Network Services Marketplace. And so we can use resource sharing alongside our Alkira network policy and network services insertion to enable that additional security measure. And of course, at the same time, explicitly disabling any other communication between those segments that we haven't defined. Pretty straightforward concept. Let me get you through how it works and then we'll jump into a demo. To define resource sharing, all we need to do is define a segment resource scope or scopes for the items that we want to share. Now, this scope could consist of individual connectors or a set of individual connectors. We can even go down to explicit prefix definitions within those connectors if we want to. We can also use the concept of an Alkira group in a resource scope or a multiple sets of groups, or we can enable sharing of an entire segment if we like. So once we've defined those scopes that we want to enable communication between, we then simply define a resource share policy. Now, this resource share will consist of an A end resource and a B end resource. We can choose whether to do unidirectional communication. So only one end can instantiate communication to the other for the permitted services, or we could allow bidirectional communication where either end can instantiate the flow. Now, once this is defined, we can also overlay network policy. So that could be a policy defined within the Alkira forwarding fabric itself to permit or deny flows or we could integrate a third-party firewall into there for next-gen firewall enforcement. If we look at the resource sharing topology here, if you've watched our previous videos, this topology should be familiar to you. On the left-hand side here, we have a set of on-prem connectors. On the right-hand side, we have a set of cloud connectors. Now these are defined into two segments, a corporate segment and a PCI segment. Additionally, within the CXPs, we've instantiated firewalls from our Kira Network Services Marketplace that we'll use within this demo. What I want to do today is permit the PCI segment to call out to a specific subnet that sits within the corporate segment. So in this case, I've got an Azure connector here. It's got two subnets defined, 172.16.120 and 172.16.121. So let's say this, for example, 172.16.121 hosts my infrastructure services. I want to allow this PCI segment to communicate explicitly with just that prefix and not allow any other communication between the segments. At the same time, I'm also going to service insert uh, a next-gen firewall from uh, within the Alkira CXP into that flow. Okay, so moving over to the demo environment, you can see I have the topology built out here that matches the diagram I just showed you. And so the connectors we're interested in are down here. So we have this IPsec connector in our PCI segment uh, representing a branch. And we have this Azure connector here that is going to hold our infra assets that we want to share. If we look at the route table, 
for this connector, we can see that there is two subnets learned. So 120 and 121. It's this 121 subnet specifically that we are going to share into our PCI segment. Coming back to the topology here, if I want to start configuring this, all I have to do is come through here to a resource sharing. And I'm going to start by set by defining my segment resource or the scope of my segment resource. And so this resource is going to be my infra assets hosted in my corp segment. So I'm going to give that the name infra assets. And as you can see here, I can select from groups or connectors. So I could select uh, one or more groups or connectors in any combination. But in this case, what I want to do is just select this, a single Azure connector here that we can see gets highlighted. Now I can choose to do all prefixes or I can choose custom prefixes. So all prefixes will create a segment resource that uh, includes all the prefixes learned from that connector, or I can use a prefix list to define just a subset. So I pre-created this prefix list here, which includes 121.0. So now that I've created that, we can see that in the list here called in for assets. Now the next step is to go and create the actual share. So I come through to manage segment resource share and create a new resource share. So it's gonna ask me a couple of questions. First, what is the A end of the resource share? So this will be my PCI segment where I wanna communicate from and the B end, which will be where my infra assets are hosted, which is where I wanna to communicate to. So for the PCI segment, what I've selected here is all PCI all, which is essentially the entire segment. And on the corporate side, I'm going to choose infra assets. Now this is just that specific VNet and within that, just the specific subnet I want to share. Scrolling down, you can see various options, including do I want to enable inline firewall support? So in this case, I'm going to say, yes, I want to enable pan firewall support. And I additionally, I can choose which direction. So bi-directional or unidirectional if I choose. So now I have that configured. You can see it in the list here. I can visualize that. It'll show me all the connectors that are in scope of that policy. If I want to, I can come through and look at the route table and I can start to see that resource sharing in action. So if I come over to the PCI segment here, we're going to see all the routes that are available in the PCI segment. Now this branch two and this GCP connector here are natively in the PCI segment. However, this additional route here, which we can see is labeled as shared, is the one that's being enabled via resource sharing. So this is the subnet from the corporate segment that has been shared over to the PCI segment. Now, conversely, in order for the corporate segment to communicate back, we need to share the routes from the PCI segment. Although what you'll find in addition to this is there is also some network policy that constrains that communication flow. So if I look at my network policies, what I will now see is I have this generated policy here, which includes, again, the scope of those connectors that I'm interested in. And if I zoom in, we'll see that the PAN firewall is being service inserted. Now, just to show you the PAN firewall in this mix. So I have a Palo Alto firewall here. We can see that I've got a policy configured here that allows web traffic. So this first line here is essentially a line that's allowing web traffic. We can see that permitted. So DNS and web browsing. Uh, the second line I have here is for ping and I'm explicitly disabling ping within this resource share. Now the default policy here for the remainder essentially says to block all other traffic. All right, so I can go ahead and validate this and see how this operates now. So if I come through, I have a VNC session here. So this is a web browser, which is sitting in the PCI segment. And what I can do is I can go and browse over to that 172.16.121.4, which is an Azure web server that sits in my corp segment. So right there, we can see that that is operating now. We can see that we're able to communicate from the PCI to this corp segment. Likewise, I can do a similar from the console screen here. So I can do a curl. We can see that that curl goes through and downloads the same content. If I try and ping that server though, we can see that that traffic is dropped. Now to validate that that's occurring, we can come back here to the firewall console, which I showed you earlier. If we go over to the monitor page, we can see that this traffic is indeed being sent via this firewall. We can see the web browsing session that I initiated that's been permitted through the firewall and we can see that in the log. And then we can also see the subsequent curl requests and we can see the various ping requests that have gone through, which have all been denied. So just demonstrating that as well as crossing between the segments, 
we are also pushing this traffic to the Palo Alto firewall that we have in the mix. Thanks very much for joining me for today's session. I hope this is helpful and look forward to seeing you in future episodes.